Diane, as you embark upon your life's next chapter, I want to thank you for devoting four decades to higher education, including 14 years of remarkable, committed service to the California State University, first at our Monterey Bay campus and the past eight years at CSUN. With your bold yet steady guidance, CSUN has become nationally recognized as a leading driver of social mobility with an unwavering commitment to inclusion, academic excellence, and student success. And through the prolific research, scholarly activity, and creative expression that you have championed, the campus has become a model for environmental sustainability and a wellspring of both innovation and entrepreneurship. Diane, you have also been a model for your peers. As the California State University's senior president, you have shown such admirable strength untiring conviction and the courage to stand by your core values for the good of all students, even when met with resistance. Your command of issues ranging from online education to intercollegiate athletics to philanthropy exemplifies the vast knowledge, skills, and vision required to successfully lead a large, diverse, and consequential university campus in America today. You've been a true inspiration to me and to the other campus leaders across our university. Never more so than when you selflessly delayed your retirement to ensure that CSUN had measured and experienced leadership through this challenging and unprecedented moment in time. Diane, I thank you for your clairvoyance to identify opportunities, needs, and obstacles that are around the corner, your conviction to confront the headwinds, your commitment to educational and research mission equity and the fundamental promise of each person and the courage to do what's right to fulfill that commitment. And above all, Diane, on a personal note, I thank you for your trusted counsel and friendship through the years. I wish you and John the very best in all that is next. John, thank you for your innumerable contributions, not only to CSUN, but to the California State University system as well. The CSU Board of Trustees and I are forever grateful for your service and the shining example you've set for those who will follow. Please know that you will be greatly missed. Diane, congratulations and best wishes upon your retirement. As a student leader working with President Harrison, my experience was great. She was always really open with us. Um, I had the pleasure of visiting the university house about three times during my stay at CSUN. Um, and every time we were greeted by her and her husband, um, got to meet her entire cabinet, got to meet her team. And she was always very careful of asking us what our personal experience was, as well as what our goals were for the year. Um, and throughout the year, she was able to check in with us. I had the privilege of having one-on-one -on -one meetings with her every single month to just talk about the experience, what was happening in our community, um, and what we wanted to do moving forward. And we always had her support in every single initiative that we wanted to take on. Um, she was really encouraging, and she was also very proud of us every step of the way. So it was like having backup uh, from the president, which was amazing to have. Hi, Diane. Well, although these words are difficult to, to come by, think of exactly what I might say to you. I didn't want to pass up this opportunity to congratulate you, extend well wishes to both you and John from me and Paula um, as you move into this next phase of your life. Uh, you've talked about stepping away from uh, your presidency, which is an interesting way of thinking about this next phase for you. Um, you probably expressed it that way because I know that deeply burning within you is a continuing a commitment to higher education and a continuing commitment to students and to supporting them no matter what you might be doing uh, as they pursue their educational goals and objectives. And so who knows what the future will bring, but for this phase, you've certainly worked so hard and you absolutely deserve the opportunity to throttle it back just a little bit and enjoy life uh, at a different pace. You know, um, I want to take this time to really just pause and say thank you. Uh, thank you in so many ways and ways that are far more numerous than 
um, any video could probably capture. But, um, you know, when I think back on our first um, couple of interactions together, one of the things that really became abundantly clear to me uh, very early on was your deep and abiding commitment to addressing the needs of each and every student. I, uh, this is a very large institution and it would be very easy to rely upon rather pat bureaucratic responses to students when they uh, express needs to you. But I remember, uh, recall even to this day so vividly that when students write you about a specific concern, uh, you have led in a way that has expressed to all of us your expectation that we do everything uh, possible and within our, our capacities to be responsive to the needs of students. Uh, and you've done that individually and sometimes you've done that in, when students come to you in groups. Sometimes those groups have to do with sit-ins and demonstrations or other kinds of ways of, of student activism about social concerns of one sort or another. But the point being is that you've heard uh, from our students, uh, no matter how they've come forward, and you've always done your best to be responsive. And, and, and I don't think that there can be higher praise in terms of a president's uh, role in particularly this day and time, and particularly serving the students that we're blessed to be able to serve here at Cal State University in Northridge. I could go on, as you could tell, talking a great deal about the, the many things that we find remarkable about your time here, about all of the facilities, the, the Pride Center and the Vet Center and the Dream Center and all of the various uh, kinds of ways in which student life was enriched uh, on your watch. But um, we hope, Diane, that you will feel um, a sense of accomplishment uh, by your time here, that you will know that you have left the institution uh, in a better place uh, and that there is a foundation upon which we can build as we continue to get students to success uh, in the, to the future. So I will I'll end where I started by saying thank you. And in addition, we want you to remember that uh, once a matador, always a matador. Congratulations and thank you, Diane. All the best in the future. Bye-bye. President Harrison's focus on student success was apparent in my very first interview with her uh, over a year ago, she was very clear about her goals for the university and her commitment to student success. She has talked about how uh, we have faculty in all different parts of the university who are equally committed to student success and sometimes needed to know, we all needed to know different ways to do certain particularly difficult things the impact of student success on our academic departments is that it really has gotten everybody thinking about the way we do things now and maybe we should look at things differently and we should look at things from a different direction. From all the work done on student success, one of the things that affects students uh, the most, high impact practice, is bringing students into our research. So faculty who are very engaged in their own scholarship, their own creativity, the research that they do, they bring that excitement into the classroom and get the students excited about that. Many of our students have never thought about research as a path for them themselves and having that exposure can really inspire them. I think that President Harrison has had a profound impact on the university. Upon President Harrison's arrival in 2012, employees truly gained a champion. Uh, she passionately believed that it was critical to emphasize the value and to celebrate every employee's role in student success. She supported and she participated in efforts that demonstrated this, and she empowered others to focus on this as a priority. Uh, from community gatherings and recognition events, professional development, orientation programs, the examples are plentiful. But she also passionately believed that we could only do so much at a university level. The work of creating a destination workplace happened in the workplace, in an individual college, at a desk, or on campus grounds. 
and this required the work of all campus administrators. It was again through President Harrison's unwavering support that we now have leadership principles, a set of aspirational but realistic traits that we can and should expect of ourselves and of each other. Uh, the leadership principles are most assuredly a component of President Harrison's legacy. And really, how tremendously great is that? President Harrison, when she came, um, made a decision. CSUN is a very diverse community. However, the president decided to leverage that diversity and expand on it by creating my office, the office for the chief diversity officer. She took inclusion and made it um, something that was much more tangible. It wasn't just, you know, let's call in a speaker. Let's have a speaker series, let's have a lecture series. No, it was more about how are we personifying that? How do we do that here at CSUN? What does that look like for our faculty and staff? What does that mean to our students and how do we engage them? How do we become anti-racist, anti-biased in all that we do? And I really think that change is gonna be part of her legacy. It will be something I hope that I continue as long as I'm here. President Harrison is a recognized leader in sustainability across higher education, and this is another area where she's really pushed the campus to compete and excel at the national level. Under her leadership, CSUN's received millions of dollars in, in grants and incentive funds over the past few years, in addition to a number of national rankings and certifications. There are probably too many to list, but I'll give you just a few. Um, CSUN under Diane's leadership was one of the initial campuses to sign on to the groundbreaking President's uh, climate commitment. Uh, under, under Diane's leadership again, CSUN implemented LEED gold standards for all our major capital construction as a minimum standard. So every building that's been done under Diane's tenure is minimum LEED gold. Um, we also developed what I believe is still uh, the only LEED Platinum and Zero Energy building in the CSU, the AS Sustainability Center. Um, additionally, uh, we were recognized the last two years um, as a, by ASHE, the Association for Sustainability in Higher Education, uh, as a gold level campus and the highest ranked campus in the CSU for those two years. So I could go on and on, but um, I just want to say to Diane, um, I'm so proud to have been a part of your cabinet and your leadership team over these past eight years. And you can rest assured that we will continue to compete at the highest level for this campus and for our students. Go Matadors. Hi, this is Mark Emmert, president of the NCAA, and it's my real pleasure to join in this celebration of Diane Harrison and all that she's meant to higher education, including intercollegiate athletics. Uh, I've had the incredible pleasure of working with President Harrison for pretty much all of my tenure in this job, and uh, it, it's been such a joy to have her involved and every conversation that we dealt with, which covered the entire waterfront of all the issues in college sports, Diane's voice was always the one that, that focused on what would a decision, what would a topic, what would an issue mean to the students themselves? How is this gonna impact their ability to be successful in the classroom or on the court? How is it gonna impact their health and well-being, their status, their, their chances of using college sport to go on and do all the other things they were gonna do in their lives? 
and candidly, that was really refreshing. And, and she she's had an amazing ability to pull everything right down to earth and say, yeah, yeah, I understand the big philosophical topic here, but what's this mean for the kids? Uh, it was a wonderful voice to have in all of our meetings and around our board table. And, and, and just as a personal uh, voice, you know, to remind me of, of what we're all about and why what we do is so important to so many young people. And, and, you know, that was also part of the themes that Diane always brought to our discussions about what's college sports about on a campus. And what does this mean for the student body in general? Not, not just the athletes, but for the students that are there and in terms of building a sense of community and giving everybody something to rally around, something to be proud of and, and something to engage with the community that, that the campus lives in. You know, I saw that firsthand when I visited CSUN a number of years ago and, and saw how proud Diane was of the campus and her students and her faculty and coaches. And it was, it was a warming reminder of what intercollegiate athletics is supposed to be and what it really means to higher education today. So as you all give Diane a, a, a warm send off, I, I just have to say, uh, my dear friend, Diane, I, I miss you already. And uh, I really, really like having you uh, as that one of the voices that's uh, someone I can constantly turn to. And I know we're, we're not done. We'll, we'll hear more from you because you've still got a lot of things to contribute to American higher education. But congratulations on one milestone. Thank you. Thank you so much for everything you've done, uh, not just for CSUN, but for the student athletes uh, all across this country and all the invaluable contributions you've made to American higher education. Good luck and thanks so much. One of President Harrison's greatest attributes and one that I think she's definitely instilled in the campus community is her competitiveness. And anyone who's ever had the pleasure to sit near President Harrison at one of our athletic events knows what I mean. She's probably our most vocal fan. But what you probably don't know is that of the, of the countless conversations I've had with uh, Dr. Harrison over the years regarding intercollegiate athletics, the vast majority of those have been discussions around student welfare and the academic success of our students. Don't get me wrong, she cares about winning on the field and on the court, but the academic success and the overall life success of our students is really where she's committed. And she's pushed us to compete for resources, grants, um, to pursue best practices at the national level um, in support of that goal. So you can imagine um, this past spring, uh, just how happy President Harrison was when despite the uh, incredible burdens of the, the pandemic, we had a record number of our student athletes um, 91 that made the uh, CSUN Varsity N Academic Honor Roll. And 11 of those student athletes uh, had a perfect 4.0. So uh, what a great accomplishment and a, and a testament to the way Dr. Harrison has really pushed us to pursue excellence in that area. Our students' success and their ability to make a positive impact is the driving motivation. Diane's leadership helped CSUN's reputation and visibility shine brighter than ever. Whether the launch of CSUN's first comprehensive brand platform that authentically reflected the essence of the university and won national awards, or the extensive engagement in the most important regional, civic, and national educational organizations, Diane led the way. Rankings, name recognition, prestigious institutional awards, digital affinity and reach, media coverage, community favorability, alumni engagement, they all trended up significantly during her presidency. And as CSUN's reach and status rose, so too did external support. CSUN set new records in the number of donors and dollars committed nearly every year of her presidency. 
and we are now positioned to launch our first ever university-wide campaign. Research funding, licensing, corporate partnerships, auxiliary revenue, and public investments have all also grown significantly. The Matador Nation has never been stronger. Diane, thank you for your leadership and for your friendship. You will be missed. But I'm guessing you're not gonna miss my driving as we bomb down the freeways of Los Angeles from event to event. But we survived, and moreover, CSUN is thriving like never before. All the best in your next adventure, Diane. Thank you. Hi everyone, I'm Mayor Eric Garcetti. Over more than four decades, President Harrison has lifted up the dreams of thousands of young people. And she cemented CSUN's reputation as a beacon of educational excellence, not just in the San Fernando Valley and the City of Angels, but throughout this country and world. She's inspired so many of us with her dedication to student success, her commitment to diversity and justice, forging relationships abroad, boosting the university's global standing, pushing the campus to advance sustainability efforts, and building strong partnerships with public and private organizations that allow students and faculty and staff to collaborate and innovate. I've seen her spirit, I've felt that power, and I'm so grateful for all that you have done to ensure that Angelinos learn and grow and achieve. And thank you for helping us build a healthier and a stronger city, and personally, for the friendship. You're a remarkable human being, and it's been my honor to work alongside you to make a better LA and a better world. Congratulations. Hey everybody, this is Bob Hertzberg, the Majority Leader of the California Senate, speaking from my home here in Van Nuys. I just wanted to give a big, gigantic congratulations to Diane Harrison, President of CSUN, for your extraordinary championship for the San Fernando Valley. CSUN is one of the, if not the most important institution, one of the largest employers in the Valley, educator of folks on all corners of the Valley and throughout the County of Los Angeles and beyond. It's very challenging to be president of CSUN because you're part of the LA County where there's so many other institutions and where so often uh, resources and issues of attention on political issues and the like all, often aren't at the forefront of leaders throughout LA County and through California. And Diane has just been a warrior, a rock, solid as a rock, uh, never waning. Uh, certainly with respect to Measure M on transportation, we wouldn't have had that $180 million for CSUN's transportation, but for President Harrison. We're gonna miss you. We're gonna miss you a lot. Just an extraordinary contribution, extraordinary leader, extraordinary partner, as we are warriors for the San Fernando Valley, warriors for CSUN, and warriors for higher education. Thanks for your extraordinary contributions to all of us here in the San Fernando Valley, to all of the alumni and students at CSUN. We'll never forget you, we'll always appreciate you. Thank you very much. So from the first time President Harrison arrived at campus and I met her early in her tenure, she recognized that CSUN is the intellectual heart of the San Fernando Valley, one of the most powerful economic engines we have in this region and she was determined to strengthen its ties with the community. She's done exactly that. President Harrison is an incredible advocate for this institution. When she gets involved with an organization, she's not there just to do civic good. She's there to advance the interests of Cal State Northridge. She joined the board many years ago of my organization, the Los Angeles Economic Development Corporation. And just last year, our board of largely business leaders elected her as chair of the board, the first university president in the history of the LADC to be chair of the board. They did that because she helped write the strategic plan for the LADC, ensuring that our work was matching up well with her vision for the future of this institution. In some ways, it's exhausting to be a partner with Diane Harrison. She has so much energy, she challenges all all of us to be better, to do better, to think smarter, more long-term, more strategically, more proactively. But she's such a joy to be with. I think because of the profile that this university has, uh, it, it allows for, for others to want to contribute, others to want to, to provide opportunities for our students, not only financially, but for job opportunities. And I think President Harrison, uh, I think her leadership has been extraordinary in that area in uh, allowing, uh, uh, allowing this university to, to, be on, to be on the playing field with other major, major uh, Southern California universities. I think a university has to ask themselves the question, any university has to ask the question, 
what is their degree worth? And I think their degree is worth what the public thinks that degree is worth. In the last, you know, eight to ten years, the profile of this university has, has, has gotten to the point where when you say CSUN, people look up and they go, wow, CSUN. Under President Harrison's leadership, she has further expanded our profile, uh, not only in the local community, but I think in the national, the national uh, arena as well. Under President Harrison, our school has grown tremendously. Under her leadership, we have uh, reached the highest number of uh, student enrollment uh, in our history. We are more well known throughout the country. Diane never solicited us. We, we were hard workers at the campus, uh, and she, she recognized that. But it wasn't until we said, we are considering a gift, that uh, she just was very helpful in, in what we wanted to do, how we wanted to do it. She had a sense of humor and a sense of delight and was sort of um, encouraging to her students and the faculty because they saw the joy that she had in her job and perhaps that also resulted in the sun shining down on the university as a whole. Well, um, I bounce around from one project to another, and uh, when I have a question, I have a, a, a message I want to deliver. I type it out just then and there, thinking that I'll get an answer the next day. Well, not with Diane Harrison. You get an answer like almost immediately. <laughs> I think all you have to do is look at the, the major publications in the, in the country and see how they rate CSUN in their, in their uh, polls, um, the Wall Street Journal, Forbes magazine, uh, Money magazine. We are rated very, very high in many, many different areas. And I think this is a, a testimony to Diane's work uh, throughout the country and in Washington, D.C. in particular. She has been uh, a very good leader. She has been uh, the right leader for, uh, for CSUN. Uh, and we're going to miss her when she, when she leaves. And, and the, her successor is going to have very, very big shoes to fill. President Harrison, the eight years that you have led us have been very productive ones. Equally important to Debbie and I is that, we're in, that they were enjoyable and exciting years that we'll always treasure. We'll miss you for so many reasons getting an email response from you at one or two in the morning, seeing you put on a smile even when the challenges and problems were hanging on your shoulder, witnessing important announcements you made appropriately with firmness or with joy and pride, and even sharing stories about Florida State's successful football program. We'll remember them all. We'll miss your leadership, Diane, and your ability to run such an important and enormous institution for which you could command compensation and appreciation, perhaps many times your current fear. Good luck, Diane. Be well. We love you. I remember the first time I met Diane in our office over six years ago, maybe close to seven years ago. And from that first meeting, I was very impressed with her. I knew that if I'm gonna make a big investment as CSUN, I need a great partner. And soon I found out that I have the best partner I could ask for. And since then, we built a very strong relationship. It has always been based on trust, based on listening, and supporting each other. And what she's done in her tenure at CSUN, it is unbelievable. Diane will have a few milestone at school, but one of them that is very close to my heart is starting our capital campaign. The capital campaign, it will change a lot of students' lives and be something that hopefully we're gonna do it for years and years to come. And under her leadership, we got the right team, right support, right investment. And uh, we are starting a great run and I know this will be something that all of us will be very, very proud. Thank you, Diane. And I want to echo David's uh, sentiments. Diane has been a visionary leader for Cal State Northridge. 
and um, her ability to execute her vision has been so impressive to both David and myself. And it's been such a joy just to know her personally and to know that her heart has always been with the students and creating the best environment for these kids to be learning and thriving. Thank you so much for all your service, Diane. We wish you the best of luck. Thank you, Diane. I think one of the best things that CSUN has going for it is the number of opportunities for students to find a place where they feel comfortable and where they're going to find a passion and their maybe the, what their life goal is going to be. I didn't know what I wanted to do until I actually got into a research lab. So I think that's the key is giving students the opportunity to, to feel at home someplace. So CSUN's research, uh, when I came here, it was, it was ramping up and it was just starting to become something that was the focus for faculty hires. And with Dr. Harrison, she really made it a priority on campus that this is something we want to get into practice because it's a high impact practice for students to be successful. We know that students that have opportunities in laboratories are able to go out and get into research positions elsewhere, to get into uh, graduate programs, and to really be successful in their lives. Learning is the key. And I believe when I came here, engaged learning was not one of the main focuses. And I think under Diane's uh, direction, we really changed how faculty interact with students. At least in the STEM field, it used to be the sage on the stage, stand up there and just spit information at students and now it really is have the students interact with the material talk to one another have class projects where they're hands-on and that engagement creates a sense of self a sense of uh, passion because it's mine I want to do it it's mine the students eat it up a culture of innovation really is the concept that there will be opportunities, not just now, but in the future. I know that there will be opportunities because the legacy that Diane has left for us is that we want to be on the cutting edge. We don't want to be lagging behind and following. We want to be out at, at the front edge doing the testing of new technologies, new ideas, and giving everybody the opportunity to get on board right away. It gives us the chance to really understand who we are as people, whether we're able to take those kinds of risks. President Harrison and I have had a very nice working relationship. We've bonded over some of the shared issues that have come up on campus. She's been a mentor to me about how to be a better listener, a better leader, a better person. I, I hope that she continues with her mentorship of younger folks, younger faculty, younger administration, even students. I would say one of, one of President Harrison's best leadership qualities is her ability to analyze a situation and see all the pieces that fit into that situation. She has been an advocate, a strong advocate for students, for student success, for diversity on this campus. I can't imagine a person that has done more for students than anyone, than anyone else. The reason that research is important for faculty, research scholarship, creative activity, the reason it's important for faculty is because it keeps their interests alive, it motivates them to achieve more and do more, they get excited about the work they're doing. A good example of that is the research we're doing uh, that's funded by NASA and it's joint between CSUN and the Jet Propulsion Lab. And the, the opportunity for our faculty and many students to participate in understanding how artificial intelligence is gonna change the world around us is really meaningful. The faculty are very invested in this. They care about it very much and that excitement is communicated to the students.